Hey you, welcome to Wasted Audio. Today we're going to have a look at the Electrosmith Daisy and how you can turn your PD patches into standalone audio device. If you haven't yet watched our introduction to Plug Data and the Heavy Compiler, you should definitely watch this video first. The DAISY platform is based around an SCM32 microcontroller and includes stereo audio inputs and outputs and the number of general purpose I.O. pins that can be configured for analog controls like knobs and control voltage and various peripherals like MIDI and all kinds of different sensors. With this, you can create your own audio devices and there are already many commercial products based around the platform. Companies like Qubit, Noise Engineering and Chompy have all made great products based on it. Electrosmith themselves have created several concept devices that are useful during development, but also really nice to use on their own. A few years ago, they were kind enough to send over a DAISY field in order to help with developing integration with the Heavy Compiler. They however did not sponsor the contents of this video. So let's start making a patch to program onto the DAISY. We'll start with a very basic patch that should just output a sign oscillator. So we'll create oscillator object at 440 hertz and connect it straight to the DAC. That's enough. Okay, so now we can flash it onto our DAISY. So here I have my DAISY field. Let's go to the compile menu. And here we already have selected the Electrosmith DAISY and our target board. So one thing you need to do is select your specific device. So that could be one of these uh, concept devices by Electrosmith themselves, or you can supply custom JSON. So in a future episode, we'll go look into how you actually can construct your own board JSON file to create your custom device. For now, we'll just use the field. Uh, so there's three different export types. You can just export the source code with including the DAISY wrapper. Uh, we can just compile the binary and save it on a computer, or we can directly flash the DAISY, which is what we want to do now. Then there's three different uh, methods of uh, flashing. Uh, one is straight to the internal flash memory. However, this is rather small. It's only 128K and our program, including libdaisy and our heavy internal library is quite big already. So we don't have that much space for program. Now for our little program, that should be enough. So let's put our program into a flash mode. For this, the easiest way is to first press the boot button, then click on the reset button, and then let go of the boot button again. So now we can press flash, and now Heavy is exporting our code. It's compiling with the libdaisy library, and then it's going to try and flash our device. So there we go. It's now downloading our program onto the flash memory. And so we do see a little error here, but this is actually expected. D for util uh, always gives this error 74, and there's really not a way for us to filter this, but we can ignore this for now. So let's see if we can get any sound from our daisy. Let me put up my mixer. And there we go. We have our basic oscillator. Not that exciting, but you know, it works. So let's look at the other flash options. We don't really need any more memory right now, but we can still program our DAISY using these options. So we have what we now call the big and the huge option in PD2DSI, which is the old method of uh, flashing the DAISY using pure data. It had some optimizations for size and speed, and you had to select between these different options to program the DAISY, but it was not very clear what it was actually doing. And for some users, it was quite confusing. So we tried to simplify it with just these basic options, but we'll probably find some kind of uh, middle ground. So it's a bit more clear what's going on, but it shouldn't be too difficult that you don't understand what you're doing. The big and the huge option and the custom linker that we'll get to, they all require the bootloader to be installed. The bootloader is installed into the main flash memory where our program is right now. So we don't have a bootloader. So we first need to put the bootloader onto our DAISY and Plug Data will actually try to recognize if the bootloader is present and then program it onto the device. Uh, if it recognizes it, it will skip this step entirely. So once you have the bootloader, it's actually quite fast, but the first time it will take a little bit of extra time because we need to flash the bootloader. So let's put it into program mode again. 
to be waiting now. And because we have the patch size set to big, it's going to try and flash it onto the SRAM. And let's see what it's going to do. It's exporting the code again. It's going to compile all of our program into the memory. And now it should be flashing the bootloader. Right, so now we see it flashing the actual program as well. Let's scroll back a little bit. And here we see this program table and we can see that the, it's not using our flash memory because uh, that's where the, the bootloader is going to be. And then here we see also that it's testing for the bootloader presence. It doesn't find it, so it's going to flash the bootloader first. And then the first uh, download we see to internal flash is our bootloader. And after that, it's, it's actually going to flash our program memory onto the SRAM. So we should have a beep again. There we go. So now our program is running onto the SRAM instead of the internal flash. And let me show you if we now, let's say we now want to flash it to the QSPI, which is even bigger, but a little bit slower memory. It should actually detect the bootloader and it will skip flashing it. So in order to activate the bootloader, you really just have to reset the device and you'll see this flashing LED. Now, if it stops flashing, it means it started to boot. So what you need to do to interrupt this routine is to click on the boot button and now it's in waiting mode. So it's waiting for us to actually put the program onto the device. So now when we export our code again, it's going to export our code. It's going to compile it again. And now it has detected the bootloader and it's flashing it straight to the QSPI. And we should have our wonderful beep again. And then finally, we have the option for custom linker. And what this allows you to do is experiment with other types of memory layouts. So this is really kind of an advanced option. However, if you're using uh, dynamic tables, like for delays, that can be quite big. They won't fit into regular program memory. And with PD2DSI, you have this option to use the size optimized builds, which would also use the SDRAM. Now the SDRAM is 64 megabytes, but it's only available for this kind of dynamically allocated memory right now. So when you use the custom linker, you can use these LDS files. So for instance, if you want to use really long delays, you'll probably want to use one of these custom options. So you can either program to the SRAM with the SDRAM option or the QSPI and the SDRAM option. In the future, we'll probably include these again with our compiler, but for now you'll have to manually choose the specific linker in order to uh, flash these options. And you also have to choose the specific app type, which is normally done automatically. But if you use the custom linker, you have to really specifically set this option. You will probably want to add controls to your patch. For this, you will need access to the board definition for your specific device. Now on the DAISY wiki, there's a nice guide that was originally created for PD2DSI. And there we have an overview of the different board I.O. that are available for all the concept devices from Electrosmith. So we have the patch, the patch init, the pedal, the pod, and of course the field. So one thing we see is that we have the main names of the control devices and they can also have different aliases. Just you can use which one is more uh, useful for you. And then the different types so what kind of uh, control you can be can expect from that. Now some of these controls have different additional variants which can give slightly different outputs. So for instance, a regular uh, switch or button will always output its current state, which will either be zeros or ones. And then if you use the underscore press variant, you will only see a value when it's actually being pressed. So you will see a one when pressing the button. Or if you use the underscore fall variant, you will actually get a value when you let go of the button. And then there's the underscore seconds variant that will actually count the number of seconds that you've held down the button. 
Now, all of the analog inputs, like uh, knobs and CV in and out, will have a continuous value between zero and one. And it will output this value once every audio cycle. So it's actually a lot of uh, messages that you can get from this. Sometimes you'll want to filter them out. So let's add a simple knob to our patch. Let's use knob number one. And we have to add this hv underscore param so that the heavy compiler knows that this is a parameter for our compiled patch. Then because we get a value between zero and one, you may want to scale it. So in this case, I want to go for a db value and then turn that into an rms amplitude. And then let's do a little bit of smoothing so we don't get any hard jittering when our values are changing. Turn this into a line ramp. And of course we have to actually modify our volume. So just to test that this is actually working the way we want, let's add a little slider into our patch. Of course, also need to make it one to zero. Let's see. So this is what we're expecting from our knob. So let's flash it onto a field. Fake the bootloader. And let's convert our patch and flash it to the device. Now it should make our first knob turn into a volume control. And we have some controls. So you may want to actually see what your knob is doing. And we have this nice row of LEDs right next to each knob. So let's create a send object. And I have to check the reference to see what the name is. And here we can see LED knob one. And here also we have to put the at HV underscore param so that the heavy compiler knows that this parameter is something we want to include with the, our patch. We'll just send the knob one value straight to the LED. Of course, maybe you want to do some extra tricks or like, let's say you have an LFO and you want to show the LFO on the LED. That's of course also possible, but for now we'll just show the basic functionality. We'll put our daisy into bootloader mode and we'll compile it Now we should have a nice LED so with our volume. Now there's a few more options that you can see in the compiler. One is that you can enable USB MIDI. Uh, this is of course really handy if you want to create an instrument or if you want to control your patch with more than just the physical knobs. By default, you can also use, like our field has, the DIN or TRS MIDI input and output, but that needs its own configuration in the board definition. And we'll look into that in the next episode. Then there's also debug printing, which when you enable it, it will actually disable the USB MIDI because they have to use the same port. And with de debug printing, you can use the pure data print statement to actually print to the serial console. So if you want to debug some of your patch and want to know what the values are that are being generated, you can use debug printing to get a little bit of an idea of how your patch is doing. So I hope this was useful for you to get started programming your DAISY using plug data and the heavy compiler. Let us know in the comments what kind of projects you have in mind and what kind of subjects you want us to cover in a future episode. If you want to support the channel and our efforts with the heavy compiler, you can buy our plugins that were actually created using this setup, or you can become a GitHub sponsor or a Patreon member. All right, see you soon and take care.